Hi, Priyanka and Amritanshu. Excited to have you join us for the spotlight today. A very warm welcome on behalf of Innovation Mission Punjab. Uh, I'd like to actually start with an outstanding journey you guys started with Hobson Greens, the first microbrewery in the Tri-City and the region. If you could walk us through how you started it, uh, what was the genesis and how did the team come together? So if you could just throw some light on that. Hi, Supriya. Hi, Supriya. Thank you for getting us here. So we started Hobson Greens in 2010. When we did that, we were the fifth microbrewery of India and obviously the first in the region. And it started off, so we wanted to do something in hospitality. We, you know, uh, I had a bit of a hospitality background, Prenka is a doctor. We wanted to do something new, something different, exciting together. So we had seen this concept was starting around the world. Even that was the time it was start, uh, you know, it was gaining momentum around the world, not just in India. It was a new concept everywhere. What is a USP if some, you have to tell the larger audience about uh, hops and grains? Like, how did it start? Do you think the USP has evolved over time? Or your fundamental vision is the same when you started till date? The fundamental vision is absolutely same from day one. We believe in having a good time with whosoever you come with. We don't encroach into the customer space by uh, providing uh, more or do gigs or music or change the music. Or We believe that a, there are a certain set of people who are coming for good food, really good beers, good music, good ambience for a good time. That is, that is our forte, good time. Spend good times with your loved ones when you come to our place. And it, is a, it has been a consistent relationship with the restaurants, with the customers, that is uh, what we are offering. When you started, is there a piece of advice you received from someone and has it helped you grow towards your journey? Was there anyone as a mentor you had when you started? Yes, we had, a, uh, you know, we met a lot of people who really uh, guided us very well. Uh, there was a brewmaster, Dr. Karirappa, he really, you know, uh, you know, they sort of took us under, uh, uh, we were a young couple, we started oh, working. You know, uh, so they really uh, took to us. They uh, taught us a lot. Then there's so Dr. Of... Karepa is our brewmaster who mm -hmm. uh, started uh, with training our uh, brewmaster. And uh, initially he's done a lot of hand-holding for us. And he's based out of Bangalore. He was one of the uh, first uh, set of brewmasters in India with very uh, long uh, experience even in getting uh, Budweiser in India. And, uh, you know, he was associated with those kind of uh, brands. And he, gave, he told us two things that one is do not make this a place for your everyday parties, which made a lot of sense. And which did not let us, uh, you know, uh, become uh, the more, more focused on parties and less focused on work. We were focused because of that advice. And... Second is that, uh, you know, stick to having four to five beers mm -hmm. and do uh, well in those beers so that you have a repeat customer. And this really paved a way for us to have repeats because, you know, customer is, knows before he steps inside your premises what he wants. And he's coming back for that experience. He's choosing right now with so many options around, he's choosing. So he knows what he wants from you and we are constantly trying to surprise him. He doesn't want surprises. He wants consistency. Mm -hmm. So that really paved a way for a repeat customer for us. And uh, it worked very well. Also, do you think the times have evolved today? Entrepreneurs are much celebrated. Uh, they're given a platform. Uh, they're spoken about today. The celebrations are way higher when someone picks up a funding. People are noticing those kind of headlines. Earlier, this was something which was, or when you started, if you could just let us know by then, when you became entrepreneurs, how did the external ecosystem react on that? Especially, uh, you're coming from very different backgrounds, um, a non, mostly a non-entrepreneurial background when you were stepping into this for the first time. Uh, if you could tell us how did the 
uh, ecosystem react probably your family your friends your your core support how is that like and how do you think if you would become entrepreneurs today what would be the difference if there were if there would be any i think in facebook no no i think in every time and age entrepreneurs always have a set of uh, people who will be very critical of what you are doing because that is the journey you do and uh, whether it is family whether it is friends i mean uh, if we look back on our journey and that is uh, i think uh, across board with all entrepreneurs that initially you yourself don't know where you'll reach Mm-hmm. so uh, uh, you know society your family is very critical of you but over a time uh, yes uh, uh, there is uh, a resounding uh, i mean we have gotten a lot of love from the city we have gotten a lot of love and affection and uh, uh, astounding success in the city so uh, but over a time uh, people do recognize what you have done your journey your challenges Uh, do you also think there is a ingrained uh, talent or uh, punjabis in general as entrepreneurs which makes us great uh, risk bearers yes of course i mean see a punjabi is going out and doing things uh, by himself or herself and uh, taking a lot of risk and uh, as a society uh, punjabis are very bold in decision making processes and uh, you know so yes when you started off uh did people really come in and try this or how was the push like it took some time but that's more to do with the fact that you know when we started off people didn't know what a microbrewery was mm-hmm. brand building was required yeah so in fact you know and we didn't even brand it as a restaurant so we just said hops and grains the microbrewery mm-hmm. till quite some time people would come to us is it an office is it a factory because nobody and nobody imagined that you could produce beer you know it was sort of like ki ye kahi factory mein ban ke aati hai aap bana khud hi na sakte it's sort of like ki aap bolo ki ji aaj hum gaadiyan bana rahe hain agar gaadi thodna ho to factory mein ban ke aata hai so logon ko samjhane mein thoda time laga ki nahi hum apni bana rahe hain right fir uske andar kya hai again ki alag alag tarike se ban sakti hai because for us also it was like ki it was a commodity ki ye hai so it took time for people to understand that but i think you know once they understood jab uh, then they really appreciated what we are doing and we give tours of our brewery to people you know uh, so then they they see the amount of effort the love that goes into mm-hmm. making beer and so that is a very major aspect in this entrepreneurship that people here i feel you know they respect the effort that you have done one there always be all kind of people but you know we have found our customers you know people that we have uh, we have come across to be very very positive. positive but i'm sure you would have also faced a lot of challenges in that perspective one of them you just touched upon is educating people about beer because they just thought it's a random bottle beer uh, which you know does not probably take that much effort to brew so that process i believe would have been very tedious if there's anything else you would want to talk about in terms of the challenges uh, you faced while setting it up so anything in the setup which today in the landscape anything which was not available in the region you had to export etc etc yeah uh, even the machine that point of time there were very few people in the industry the knowledge was just not there the knowledge was not there the machine you know the uh, physical infrastructure was not there there were no machines like brewery vendors were not there the only option was getting something from china and then there was a lot of problem sourcing the right kind of uh, uh, you know machinery from there in that sense it has really changed you know uh, but also at the same time the it has muddied the waters also a lot mm-hmm. you know the people we worked with because they were at the fo- we were at the forefront they were at the forefront of these things so they were very knowledgeable and passionate people about brewing and they uh, sort of we uh, got our passion you know from them uh, our understanding from them now what has happened is the information is there there are a lot of vendors who are who have the equipments who will take even contracts you know they will um, 
management contract so they will run the brewery for you but they are not it's become difficult to understand who is genuine who has the right knowledge who has the right intention so as the information has increased so has the uh, challenges of um, figuring out you know whom you can go to and trust uh also we've kind of spoken about the evolution in terms of the infra available or the you know the machinery which has come in earlier you were exporting it now you're getting it from a vendor in india and that also talks about the evolution of craft beer in the country Absolutely. uh what else would you want to share with our uh, audience viewers in terms of how the evolution of the craft beer industry has happened or are happening as we speak so in terms of craft beer i think it's a you know uh, it's a very good time to be in the craft beer segment because this segment is really growing the education efforts for people which were you know the, who had started um, 15 years ago they they are uh, uh, they are understanding a lot of things for example like you know in bangalore the kind of beer they prefer is very different from what we prefer in north india so it's a exciting time to be in but knowledge is also there i feel that you know anybody who wants to get into it needs to be passionate about beer yeah. what we have seen is you know what has happened is there are people who sell it like it's just it's very easy to do it you know we'll set up everything for you you don't have to worry about it they lure people in by making it seem pro, uh, very prof, exceptionally profitable and very easy which is a trap because you know uh, that they get into it they realize the challenges and by that time you know they are already invested and then uh, they are stuck so we feel anybody who wants to get into it should do a lot of research first they should they, they need to know what they are getting into because the problem with fnb and uh, you know brewery especially is you know it's uh, it sounds enticing and exciting so how did you uh, evolve from hops and grains to the great beer i mean there are two brands under the family uh, how does that uh, for a consumer segment vary if you can uh, tell us a little about that as well so that's an interesting story uh, when we so this was the first expansion after the hops and grains mm-hmm. and if you're familiar with the chandigarh tri city sector 26 is not really that far from panchkula mm-hmm. so that time we didn't uh, you know we thought that if we open a hops and grain so nearby will we cannibalize our own customers mm-hmm. you know and obviously the space was also slightly different uh, hops and grains is on three floors this is on one long floor it has a lot of uh, a lot of plants there's a green wall at the back and an open courtyard so we thought that we should name it something different because it's slightly different in its character and it's also too close mm-hmm. so we named it the great bear now in hindsight you know hindsight is always 2020 we feel that we could have named it hops and grains mm-hmm. and that would have really strengthened the brand but we are happy with what we did see it's always a mix of a few mistakes and a few this one but now great bear itself has become a big brand so uh, and these are like our babies we've named <laughs> i mean you know we that's just the way it is we are just carrying on with those two identities uh great i'm mean, i'm sure i came across a really interesting um, article a thing about where you've kind of given seven golden rules about running a brewery if uh, you could uh, share those seven fundamentals with our viewers it will be amazing to know that from the entrepreneurs themselves there are a couple of things about running a microbrewery obviously you have to be consistent with your beers uh innovate also you know you need to innovate with your beers we have seen trends change if you if you get stuck in you know uh, stuck uh, doing the same thing over and over again the rest of the market is changing and you will suddenly find yourself just left behind Mm-hmm. so one one of the first golden rules for a brewery is you know learn the process understand the process learn it you know understand the importance of your raw materials your machinery and not just production then storage dispensing and uh, because this is the heart of your business 
that brewery that machine is the heart of your business so you need to be you need to know how it works you need to know uh, what are the important pain points and you know uh, pitfalls and uh, important things about it so that's one two again so the format that we are in it's a uh, it's an uh, fnb outlet so uh, your food is as important as your beer and in food also you have to make sure you know that everything is on point and you keep evolving and catering to the local preferences preferences are different even in the tri city all three outlets uh, you know our patrons have different uh, different uh, preferences to give you a very small example in panchkula people don't eat a lot of fish so fish does not do too well over there so we own, we have basa over there in chandigarh people prefer uh, sole that is mm -hmm. a preferred fish in mohali people really like the salmon yeah. so you know we are talking about 15 minutes away and people have different preferences mm -hmm. so you need to be uh, constantly working on your menu uh, for food menu beer menu cocktails you know we have recently uh, started focusing uh, quite a lot on the uh, cocktails also because the market has changed from when we started uh, you know people were like not either they were just sugary drinks they were not really nobody was putting a lot of thought in them yeah, chandigarh was a straight drinks place back in the days yeah. Yeah. now we have some really beautiful cocktails yeah. we are getting different liquors we have very different presentations so you know these ways things change yeah, i think insta has just completely yeah. taken uh, the market uh, of drink, beverages by storm and it is a lot about visuals visuals yeah. yeah. how when did you break even especially from an entrepreneur perspective you know how, how many years did it take you to break even and you know the not growth really of it's not it a, very, a lot of time it's you know we very interesting figure so you know what uh, I think it took us about three years to break mm. even. Mm. We had loans. We with had us. loans, and then you know, yeah. when we had a lot of enthusiasm, and probably not of not that much business sense. So mm. we made some, uh, you know, we made some bad decisions for which, you know, um, we overpaid for certain things. Where you know, um, so it took us time to break even. that brings me to the last segment of today's conversation um if there's one memorable milestone or uh, an experience you'd like to share with our viewers something which has been a highlight of your journey so far and that's something you will probably it will be etched in your hearts forever if you could share any of that anecdote or experience we remember one this one time that we were building our restaurant hops and grains the first restaurant and uh, this is the kind of relationship we had with the people we worked with so our brew master was here and it was our first anniversary mm -hmm. and we were in the middle of construction and we asked him that we want to go to shimla for half a day and he said no if i am working here then you are going to work with me here and then we really requested he was so senior we like dr karepa please it's our anniversary it's our first anniversary could you please let us go for like we'll go in the evening we'll leave at 6 we'll reach there we'll we'll see you at 10 o'clock in the morning if you want mm -hmm. right here and after much uh, deliberation he's like okay i give you half a day to go and come back <laughs> so that brings me to the next part uh, what should the audience expect what's next on the cards at hops greens integrate beer so we are looking uh, um we are always in the loop yeah. of doing something we yeah. are we are it's as i said it's an addiction and uh, you are always thinking of what more the city wants much what more you can do and what what that combination what what we can do with that combination of where this whole thing is trending and what and what what excites us So, are you looking at expanding beyond the city, be it the region in Punjab, India? Are you on the lookout for that? As of right now, we we are looking to expand in the city itself. That is one of the things we are thinking. You know, now our Mohali outlet is almost two years old. Mm -hmm. 
So by the end of about two and a half years, we start getting another, you know, that itch starts to come back. You know, let's do something new. So um, we are look right as of now. We are looking to do something in the city. We are diversifying as well. We are coming up with something more in the F and B industry, not just limited to microbrewery. That is one thing. Second thing is we are always looking to diversify, but our problem is that we don't get people passionate enough like us whom we can partner with. We would love to do that. We would love to do that, but uh, we can we have to see that passion on the other side. Uh, we have nurtured these brands almost like our children. Yes. So, you know, if we have to uh, do a franchisee partnership for somewhere, we really feel that, you know, uh, it's like uh, that we need to know what you're going to do with it and mm -hmm. what your thought process is. Because now we are fairly confident that, you know, we know the industry enough that everybody can falter. But, you know, we, we are fairly confident that, you know, we want to we want to expand, uh, uh, but at our own pace. We are driven for passion now. We are we are not. So we so we, so we uh, you know save uh, we get some savings. We take some loans and we open the next one. Yeah. So that's how we keep doing it, and you know I think that's how we like. So the it. integral grain of being an entrepreneur will always stay with you. That you just take us and you'll continue to be. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. We love our journey. We love the uh, journey we have done. We are looking forward to what what more can happen. Mm -hmm. And but now we in the, we are in that cycle now of what more can be done. And uh, it's it's amazing. It's nice. On that note, I'd like to wish the entire team at uh, Hobson Cranes and the Great Bear all the best. 